you hear my voice or see me for the first time or for another time, you're all welcome to our channel. And you know you're all special you're all to special me. me. I love you all and I want you to sit back so we'll learn and unlearn certain things. In my 15 medical school, I encountered a woman who at the time had delivered her seventh baby because she wanted to have a male baby as managed by her husband since all the six children we are girls. In the seventh round, that particular one I met her in, she was still a girl child. And her husband disappeared. He was nowhere to be found. And she did not register for antenatal care during that particular pregnancy. So she was classified as an unbooked patient. This patient came in with very low blood level. And after the delivery of the baby, she needed at least two pints of blood to recover. But she had no money to pay for blood. And do you know what happened to this woman? Stay with me and I'll tell you. Dr. Juliana Ome is the name. I am a midwife and a medical doctor. Permit me to school you on how to avoid what I choose to call the deadly patterns during pregnancy and childbirth. In my few years of experience, majority of women that have to die from pregnancy and childbirth, especially in developing countries, die as a result of preventable causes. Things we can avoid consistently take the lives of our mothers, sometimes with their babies. In today's health talk, we shall look at the patterns every household, every expectant parent, every pregnant couple must avoid during pregnancy, childbirth, and afterwards. These patterns I want to discuss with us cause three out of every four deaths of women during pregnancy, childbirth, and puperium. In some parts of the world, when a pregnant woman needs health care, all she needs to do is to present herself to the hospital and she's taken care of. Why in some other parts of the world, for a pregnant woman to get the care required, she has to provide everything she requires for that health care, even in an emergency situation. She must provide and pay for all of it before she be attended to. Now, with this type of system, you need to be ready at all times to pay the bills. I want to tell us on how to prepare for possible complications if you're in a part of the world where you have to pay out of pocket. Now, the first pattern seen is the pattern seen when a woman suffers severe bleeding during pregnancy, childbirth, or after childbirth, during preparium. The first thing to do as a pregnant woman is to register for antenatal care wherever you are and to be faithful to your clinic days. At a particular stage in your pregnancy, you'll be asked to donate some pints of blood. If you have enough money, you can deposit some money in the blood bank of that particular hospital and have them reserve some blood pints for you. But if you do not have so much money to spare, the best alternative is to get some persons to donate for you. Your husband, your relatives, your close friends, brothers, everyone whose blood will match with you. So prepare and donate and keep them stored for you. This is important to prepare for emergency. If a woman is registered for antenatal care, it is very easy to help her at a point of emergency because there are previous records and tests done to help. Then when she comes as an emergency situation for the first time, it's the more, more worrisome because you're not, you've not encountered her before, you don't have any history. Please, dear mothers, amazing women, do not gamble with your health, especially during pregnancy and childbirth. Do not gamble with your lives. Whatever is worth doing, is worth doing well. If you accept to become pregnant, please give it your best, please. What we see in certain where women lose their lives is lack of preparation. You hear a woman at the point of delivery clearly stating there is no money. It is not out of place to not have money because of the numerous economic hardships people are experiencing in different parts of the world. But it is not acceptable either to have a woman live her life to chance because there is no money. Pregnancy is not an emergency. And childbirth is not an emergency. Pregnancy gives you nine months notice before childbirth. As a woman, get prepared. As a husband, donate blood for your wife. If it does not match with hers, get your brothers and friends to donate for your wife. As a woman, what is your own plan for safety? Do not wait until nine months foreign around for help because no excuse is good enough to justify a woman's death during pregnancy, childbirth, or during the period. No woman comes back to life after dying. Death is irreversible. The second pattern you should be aware of is the pattern of a condition that happens following childbirth. Some women come down with infection and this is called puperial sepsis. When a woman delivers her baby, the womb feels like a bag of open wounds. So germs, if they get in there, 
can easily grow and multiply because the blood will be like fertilizer, like a manure, a, a culture medium. And then they grow so much and attack the body. So the first thing is hygiene. How clean is the place and the process of the delivery? Please, avoid the pattern of going to quarks. We are one scissors is used to deliver all the babies in one day without sterilization. People patronize some of these places because they are cheap. And they forget that cheap things actually cost you more on the long run. And unfortunately, in pregnancy and childbirth, it can cost you your life or the life of your wife. So please, once you are going in for delivery, choose a proper place in the hospital with doctors and midwives. And after the start of her delivery, please maintain a high level hygiene, bathe regularly, change your parts and eat regularly. Another factor that may cause infection after delivery is shortage of blood, especially in developing countries where people do not actually go to the hospital and just get care. They have to pay from their pockets. So please, we are back to that same matter. Get your pints of blood ready while you're pregnant so that if you have any need for top up, it will be done for you immediately as you deliver or even before you deliver as needed. In fact, most women do not require the blood they donated when they deliver. But it is better to be prepared and not need the blood than not to be prepared and then calamity will befall one, please. And get to take your medications after delivery. If the doctor prescribes any drugs for you, please take them. Sometimes you hear some mothers say the drugs are too much for my baby because baby is taking breast milk and on their own they stop the drugs. And most times they choose to stop the antibiotics. And in the next 48 hours or more, the woman starts shivering, running temperature, and everyone is confused what's the problem. Of course, the problem is not taking the drugs. Please, mother, if you feel that the prescription is too much, please come to the doctor. Let the doctor make the adjustments and not to stop the drugs by yourself, okay? Please. Now, the third pattern. Before I give you the third pattern to avoid, have you subscribed to this channel? Have you clicked the like button? Do you think I deserve you to subscribe? Either way, please, I need your subscription. I need you to share every content that you see on this channel so that we can help humanity. Yes, because people have the mothers alive. The households are in order. They take care of the children, you know, support of the husband as well. And then things are going on. And we are all happy because information is power. Okay? The third pattern we should take note of is the pattern we see with what we call pre-eclampsia and eclampsia. When a woman starts conversing during pregnancy, it's not her village people, as we say in Nigeria. It is not witches and wizards either. It is her blood pressure and the protein in her urine, which of course were caused due to pregnancy. And the way out is proper antenatal checks. Mothers, during antenatal care, do your usual blood pressure checks and urine analysis and follow instructions. Please, your doctor may advise for caesarean section if your blood pressure is too high. Don't say no. Don't run away to one church or somewhere to push like a Hebrew woman. You may lose your life and you will not come back. Please just ask the proper questions and be sure why the CS is needed. And give your consent. Caesarean section is safe. It is good. In fact, it is a Hebrew birth. You know why? Because Hebrew means a live woman and a live baby. Please. Okay? Please be wise. A family friend of mine died so many years ago before I went into medical school. And you know the reason for her death? <laughs> she was pregnant, so she had this very bad headaches and swollen body during the last stages of her pregnancy. And the doctor advised that her delivery would be through immediate cesarean section. She declined and told no one and went home and waited for labor to begin before going back to that hospital. Well, labor started, but she died on the delivery couch because she convulsed repeatedly during labor she went into eclamptic fit she died and the baby also died so sad what a waste just because we do not have the proper information knowledge knowledge my people perish for lack of knowledge we need information please delivering like a hebrew woman has caused a lot of death especially for women in the developing countries because of ignorance please mothers get to watch my health talk on hebrew birth Hebrew woman is a woman that stays alive after her delivery, whether it's through cesarean section or vaginal delivery. Stop giving yourself up for slaughter because of a lie told to the king by the Hebrew midwives. I beg you, stay alive and be Hebrew. Now, you see that woman I told us about that had seven children. Guess what happened to her? She died, leaving those seven female children and her husband. And her husband was nowhere to be found. It is sad at how many of such stories we get to hear every other time? 
Because people do not know what they ought to know. I ask us, should a woman's income determine whether she survives childbirth? Please, every household should support our mothers and women to stay alive through the processes of pregnancy and childbirth. With planning, you can make it through pregnancy and childbirth with the resources that you have, please. The fourth pattern is that most couples, most expectant parents, most women are ignorant of what they need to know during pregnancy and they fall victim of quack practice because those practices are cheaper. Get all the preparation you need. Please have a save to put some money away in preparation for childbirth. Do not wait for any miracle to happen without action because faith without good work is dead. Work and plan. Once again, it's your favorite healthcare personnel on YouTube. Please do well to subscribe to our channel. And remember, it's our channel. Share the content and help everyone stay informed. I love you all. And see you again.